All right, at the top of the page, today we're not going to start uh, with the vocab of functions or defining a function, but we're just going to start with a set of ordered pairs, and that's called a relation. Ordered pairs, think of an ordered pair from geometry. Every ordered pair has an x and a y value. So the set of all first members, or x, in the ordered pair has a name, and I want you to put the appropriate name in the, uh, the heading at the top. And the set of all second members, or y, has a special name. One of them is the domain, and one of them is the range. So in the top heading, which is the domain, which is the range? Is the domain the set of all x or the set of all y values? Which is the domain? Mike? X is domain. Y values is your range. We're going to look at this set right here. And when you give your answers in the homework assignment, you can give your answer in one of the following ways. Okay, so the way that you write it may be different than the way that I have it on my answer key, but we can talk about it when we go over it the next day. So if I look at this set here, in words, so you can always write it out, but um, I'm guessing some of you would like to use symbols rather than write everything out in words. Um, but in words, this is the set of numbers greater than or equal to negative 2. That's why you have the closed circle. And because the shading between less than or equal to or less than 0. So that's the open circle. Whenever there's a break, that's why you have the word or. It's shading between that you have the and. Or greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so you can use the notation in words, you can write it out. Interval notation, which Zach gave us earlier in the warm-up, deals with a parenthesis and a bracket. So if I write this, part of that set right here, it goes from 2, comma, 0. When you have a closed circle, is that a bracket or a parenthesis? It's a bracket. Good, Zach. And then an open circle is... A parenthesis. So then, or, now we need to write this part of the set. And this should be negative, is that's a negative 2. And then the right part after the or, this section right here, we go from 1 to, the arrow means it's going to keep going, it's not going to stop, so that goes to infinity. Because this is a closed circle, it's a bracket, and infinity always has a bracket or a parenthesis parenthesis because it doesn't stop. Okay? Now, set builder notation. This is how I write all my answers. Okay? But in the notes today, we can write both. And then we can talk about the interval notation when you go over your homework. Set builder notation does have the set brackets, and it does start with X or Y such that. That's what the bar means. So this if you want to make no, this notation uses inequalities. So the inequality for this is negative 2 less than or equal to x less than 0. It's got the equal to because of the closed circle and it doesn't have the equal to line for the 0. And then we go from 1 to infinity, that would be x greater than or equal to 1. So you can choose how you want to write your answers. Okay? Most of the multiple choice on a quiz is going to be written in set builder notation. Now, when it comes to roster notation, we can't possibly list all of the numbers in this set, especially when it goes all the way to infinity. So that gives it away right away. But what about from negative 2 to 0? Can you possibly list all of the numbers that go from negative 2 to 0? All of the decimals and fractions and can you? You couldn't list them all. Um, so when we get to domain and range, we'll talk about what notation. You can't always use, okay, raster notation. 
one type of notation might be better than the other, and we'll talk about when to use which one. So this set cannot be described in roster notation because you cannot list all of the real numbers. And the symbol from the beginning of the year when we looked at the sets of whole numbers, in, uh, integers, natural, the reals, irrational, and rationals, and then we added the complex, it's the R with the two vertical lines. Questions? All right, so let's start with domain and range. So the first one, give the domain D and range of each relation. So here's a set of ordered pairs. Now, a set of ordered pairs can be given to you as a set. This table in number three is not the table that's coming from your calculator. This is a given table because the ones on your calculator, you can typically, typically hold the arrow button and you could just keep going, right? It never stops, or you could scroll down. So this, when you see, and when I give you a table, that's a finite set. It's not an infinite set. So our domain is the x. They do not have to be in order from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. You can write them down as you see them. The important thing is, is that you don't write, if you have repeating numbers, you don't write them twice. So it's negative 2, so I would start to write them 1, 0, and then 1 again. I don't want to write the 1 twice. So I don't write the 0 twice, I don't write the 1 twice. That's the domain. So for the range, that's this side. Starting with 4, it's 4 again, so 2, negative 2, and negative 4. Let's go, let's move up. So a set that's given here of ordered pairs. So all the x's are your domain. So our domain is 2, negative 4, 1, and then I don't want to write again the 2. So three elements in the domain. And then how many elements in the range? We have 1, 5, 7, negative 3, 4. Looking at these two before we go on, can you write number one with interval notation? Talking about the different ways to write a set. Can you write number one or number two, because they're more or less the same thing, it's just giving you the set written out or in a table. You could, off to the side, write down the points. Can you write those in interval notation or set builder notation? If you can write the set in interval notation, you can always write it in set builder. So the question is, can I write those two domain and ranges in set builder notation or interval notation? So if we look at this set on a number line, okay, this is the domain Okay, for 2, negative 4, and 1. That's a finite set. It's not an infinite set. If we were to take and then actually have this shaded on a number line, which includes all the values between, so it's continuous. It goes from 1 and go, it includes all the numbers in between that and the other number. So there's no gaps. So I like everything that you guys said. So if I had something like this, then I could write it in interval notation or set builder. Does that make sense? but not when there's just a finite set of elements. All right, let's move on to 2 and 4, and then we'll get into the graphs, which are continuous. There are a nice smooth curve that contains one point all the way through to another. Have you seen something like number 2 before, a mapping diagram a while ago? Algebra 1 or earlier? Middle school? So this actually, if you know what this means, Fine, go ahead, write your domain and range. But what this is actually saying, the points are A, D, B, D, C, D, and C, E. Those are the four points. You just follow the arrows. So the domain gets mapped to the range. Okay? So if you need to, you can always write out your points. Same thing here. So the domain is just this set, three elements, A, B, C. And then the range is the set DE. Let's make these points darker. Let me know if I'm missing one. It's hard to tell up here.
If you want, you can write the coordinates. So if you like seeing the coordinates as in number one, you can write out what the coordinates are. But domain, okay, let's start on the x-axis. Say you're starting over here. There's no dots over here, so start walking right. Is there a point above the 5 or negative 5? No. Is there a point above the negative 4? Yeah, so that's the first. Your domain is your set of x. So I'm looking at the x-axis. I have a point above the negative 4. What's the next point or next domain element? Negative 2. Then what's after negative 2? Negative 1, 1, and 2 if I have that correct. So if we need to write out the points, negative 4, 1, um, negative 2, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 1, and 2, negative 1, you can easily see the domain. So if, it's that, if that's easier, but then for the range, you're now on your y-axis. So if I'm walking along the y-axis and I'm walking down, what's the first y value we have a point to the left or to the right. So on the y axis is what's, where's the points left or right where the x axis is there above and below. So what's the first element in your range? 1 and negative 1. So if you can see it from the picture, awesome. If you can't, write out your points so you can see the only numbers listed as a y value are 1 and negative 1. So you can write it like this or you could write it as plus or minus 1. And with the brackets, see I get sloppy the more I write them. I'm okay if they're sloppy, they don't have to be perfect, as long as they're not like this. Do you know why? Can't use parentheses because that would mark or note a point. Okay, so I don't mind if they're sloppy, they don't have to be perfect, but we just can't use parentheses. If you look at the top two parabolas, now these are screenshots from the calculator, so put your arrows on there. I want you to note the vertex for each. So mark the point. We have a minimum and a maximum for final exam vocab. This is a minimum point, and this is a maximum point. What are the coordinates of the vertex on the left? Yeah? 2, 1. What about on the right? Same. I just took and graphed the same parallel. I made it positive for 1 to have it right side up, and then I made a negative for upside down. The reason why I did that is because when you look at the domain for each, they're exactly the same. But the range is going to be different because one's right side up, one's upside down. So if I'm looking at the x-axis, if you want to start at the vertex, if I start to move right, I see I have points above, <coughs> points above. Will I still have a part of my curve above this x value right here? Even though you can't see it in that picture? Does the graph, will it eventually be over top of that x value? Yes, because of the arrow. As it goes up, it also is going out. So it'll eventually be above that x value. Will it ever stop? No. What about the left side? So I have part of my curve here, part of my curve here, part of the curve here. Does the domain, is there a stopping point for the domain on the left side? No. The same for this one. Starting here, your domain's going to keep going right, it's going to keep going left, you'll always have part of your curve because of the arrows, it's going to keep going out. So that's all real numbers. So you can write it as Zach did, with a negative infinity to infinity. That means all real numbers. You can write it out in words, all real numbers, or you can write it in set builder notation. So here's set builder notation. So we'll write it one way for 5. And this is the same thing. all real numbers in interval notation. They both mean all real numbers. So they have the same domain. I'm going to tell you right now, any parabola 
right side up or upside down is going to have that domain. It doesn't ever change because it's going to continue to go out. But the range is different. So I'm going to erase everything that's on this curve. Take a guess on what you think the range is. Now I'm looking at the y-axis. So let's go in blue. So this was the point 2, 1. So it's at 1 on the y-axis because it matches. There's only one of two options here because there's no graph down here, okay? So you tell me, is this range um, y greater than or equal to 1 or y less than or equal to 1? Ryan? Y is greater than or equal to 1. Y is greater than or equal to 1 because this parabola, again, the curve is going up. This one on the right is going to be y less than or equal to 1. Good. So y such that y is greater than or equal to 1, y such that y is less than or equal to 1. In interval notation, that would look like this, 1, 2, infinity. If you're starting 1 higher, this one's going to look like negative infinity to 1. Now the parabola and v have the same sort of idea when it comes to domain and range. Okay, same concept because all the V is is like taking the sides of the parabola and pulling it tight. So that makes the V. So they're very similar in shape. So it's a good idea to note the vertex. So I'm going to write the vertex here. So the vertex for this, or this V shape is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Did I count that right? Now, since the parabola and V are so similar, the domain for the parabola and the V is the same, whether it's right side up or upside down. If it's right side up or upside down, the domain is going to be all real numbers because as the V goes out, it's going to keep, let's put the arrows at the end, it keeps going, it's never going to stop, so it's going to cover the whole x-axis. So let's write it in words. Um, the domain is the set of all real numbers. The range, you want to look at your y value, which is 5, and it covers here, down. So that could be written, do you want to write it in words again? So how would I write that? Would I start it like that? Do I need to state the set of all y values? You could just start by saying the set of all real numbers less than or equal to what? Five. We're right here at five on the Set of all real numbers less than or equal to 5. In set builder notation, that would look like y such that y is less than or equal to 5. In interval notation, that goes from negative infinity to 5 with a bracket. Now the circle. For the domain, does it continue on forever in both directions? Or is it a set? Does it have a start and an end? It has a start and an end. Where does it start? Okay, you can look at it starting at zero, and then it goes how far to the right? Four, and then left, negative four. So there's our domain, from negative four to four. So I'm going to write that, let's do an interval notation, negative four to four, and then set builder would be negative four less, whoops. Should have brackets. When it's a graph, it is going through that point. The only time you have the parentheses is when it's an open circle, but those are closed. The graph's going through there. And negative 4 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 4. What about the range? Does that have a start and an end, or does it go on forever? 
has a start in it as well. It's the same thing because it's a circle with the center right here at the origin. So it starts at negative 4 to 4. So it would be negative 4 to 4. But for the range, and this is where you want a multiple choice question, can cross out two of your answers. If it asks you what's the range, you can cross all those answer choices with an X in it. If it says what's the domain, you can cross all those answer choices with a Y in it. Uh, four. All right, the last four. I want you to pick out, there's two. Two of those four have a domain that's all real numbers. Who can tell me one of the two? Which of the remaining four has a domain that's all real numbers? Kyle? Ten. That's our cubic function. There are arrows, so as it, think of it starting here, it's going to go up and it's going to continue to go out in both directions. Good. So that's x such that x is an element of the reals. Which other one has a domain of all real numbers? There's one more. Other than the cubic function, this other type of function always has a domain of real numbers if it's slanted. Yeah. The linear function, so number 11. Good. So let's now assess which ones have a range that's all real numbers. Which ones have a range that includes all real numbers? So looking at the y's now. Lindsay? 10 again, yep. Because it's going to continue to go up and never stop because of the arrow. It's going to continue to go down because of the arrow. So y such that y is an element of the real. And then what other one? Kyle? 12? Nope. Because if there's no arrows and there's actually dots here, it means the range only goes from here to here on the y-axis. So is that from negative 3 to 3? It's just hard to see. So that we're down to either 9 or 11. Which one has all real numbers for the range? 11, yep. So let's finish the last two. The domain for this one, it's good to note the starting point or the vertex, which is right here at 0, 0. So your domain is going to start here at 0, and it's going to go right. So your domain is x such that x is greater than or equal to 0. And then the range, starting on the y-axis, this is going to continue to go up because, as you can see, it gets farther and farther away from the x-axis. So it's y such that y is greater than or equal to 0. So last one, 12. We're looking at the domain. It's not all real numbers because it has a start and an end. So if I look at the curve, which, again, it goes from here to here on the x-axis, that's going from 0 to 3. So x such that 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 3. To finish up on the back, okay, the last thing you could possibly see is just the equation, so no picture. And we're going to quickly sketch these without the calculator, okay? Or we can see how many. This is a, what type of function is 13? It's a linear, yes. What's the slope? We have a slope of 1, y-intercept of negative 1. So down here at negative 1, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a sketch. Here's a slope of 1. The 1 to the right is going to be what type of function? A parabola. Now, based on the rules of transformations, is this going to be right 3 or left 3 for the vertex? Left 3 and up or down 5? So left and down, you could just put a dot. Is it a happy parabola or sad? It's right side up, right? No negative in front. So we're just going to sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect. But it's always good to note with the parabola of the vertex. Can anyone tell me what the vertex would be if we went left 3, down 5?
based on the shift, we went left, one, two, three, and then down five, so one, two, three, four, five. Vertex will be negative three, negative five. So in the domain, domain and range, it's a line. What's the domain and range always for a slanted line? All real numbers. So we'll write it in, I like to use set, but you can write an interval x such that x is all reals and y such that y is all reals. The domain for a right side up parabola is always the same. What's the domain for a right side up even upside down? Domain for a parabola, because it keeps going and it's going to keep going out, it's going to be all real numbers. But the range is not everything because on the y-axis, it starts here, look at the y value of your vertex, and it goes up. It doesn't include anything below. So the range is y such that y is greater than or equal to negative 5. What's the shape of the one on 15? Can we do 15 without a calculator? Sure. What shape is it? So it's a... Yeah, the V. Right side up, upside down. So what's the transformation? Is it left or right 7? It's left. It's opposite. And then, whoops, let's change that to be a plus. That was a typo. So left 7, then up 2. So sketch the V. It doesn't have to be perfect. So domain it keeps going all the way across the x-axis. So our domain is all real numbers. The range, you might want to note the vertex, which the vertex, if it went left 7, up 2, is negative 7, 2. So looking at the y value, over on the y-axis here at 2, we're going up. So it's y such that y is greater than or equal to 2. Last one. Type that in on your calculator. What does that look like? If you take a look at your warm-up, we did the square root function. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be above the x-axis. That's right. Where's the vertex or the starting point? Where on the x-axis? Negative 3 or positive 3? Positive 3. 1, 2, 3 right here. And then does it go this way or that way? To the left. So here, and then it goes this way. So our domain, unfortunately, there's nothing on the x-axis here. So our domain's not going to be all real numbers, but it's going to be what according to 3? Greater than or equal to or less than or equal to if we're going left? Less than or equal to. Range? Um, if you want to make note of the vertex, it's 3, 0. So you can look at the x value for do your domain and the y value of 0. How does y compare to 0 if we're shading above the x-axis and not below? Greater than or equal to?